Welcome to my first video regaling you with the tales of my trials and tribulations in backyard astroimaging. I've had my telescope for several years, but didn't get seriously moving in this direction till recently. So I'm new to the game and I'm still on the steep slope of the learning curve. The things that have demotivated me from going all out on astrophotography have been relatively small things. First, Canada is cold. Okay, that's not a small thing, but it's cold. Second, DSLRs aren't really great for astrophotography. They can be adapted to the purpose with T-adapters, infrared pass sensor filter conversion, and camera control software like Backyard EOS, but it still feels clunky to me. I was completely inept at polar alignment. That's the third thing. Oh, I hate using the polar scope with the mount. I can't tell you how many times I banged my eyebrow on it trying to look through the eyepiece as I bent over. And who had the bright idea of using black for the star template in the reticle? Why isn't there such a thing as a polar scope with a lit reticle? <sighs> anyway, I can't do much about the winter cold. Sure, I can spend oodles on electronic filter wheels and software, and that doesn't necessarily allow me to stay indoors anyway, especially if I'm using Hyperstar with filters. We do get warm periods in Calgary, warm being a relative term in winter, but it's still the least favorite aspect of the experience. But I can do something about the other demotivating issues. After some research into CCD cameras, I bought an ATIC Infinity Monochrome CCD camera. I chose monochrome over color because of its increased resolution and the ability to use narrowband filters in conjunction with this camera. So the versatility is greater with monochrome. The Infinity is an interesting camera. Rather than being a still CCD camera, the software controlling it allows it to be used for video imaging, making it useful for deep sky and planetary imaging. The ATIC Infinity software stacks the sub-images in real time, making for a much more satisfying and motivating experience than with a DSLR, and I presume also uh, relative to a still CCD camera. Only one nitpick with this camera. As others have noted, the power connector is rather loose. Loose as in will fall out when you most need it not to. And the ATIC Infinity software doesn't like losing its connection to the camera, so it needs to be restarted anytime this happens. I've managed to use the dew shield to keep the cable from pulling out when I'm using Hyperstar, but I will have to come up with some other hack when I use the camera on the back end of the scope. As for the polar alignment thing, I invested in the unfortunately named Pole Master. Best thing I ever did and has done more than anything to get me using my scope more. It really does make polar alignment a breeze and it's almost a game in fact. I just wish it had a better name. So my first target with the ATIC Infinity is number 42 in the Messier catalog, the Great Nebula in Orion. It's a very bright nebula, magnitude 4.0 and fairly large, so it's visible to the naked eye. It's a star factory about 24 light years across and some 1340 light years distant. The gear I was using includes the Celestron 1100 Edge HD scope on a CGEM DX mount and tripod. I was using Starzone as Hyperstar Focal Reducer which takes the scope from an aperture of f10 up to f2, so fast even by DSLR photography standards. Attached to that was the ATIC Infinity Monochrome CCD camera. LRGB and Hydrogen alpha, singly ionized sulfur, and doubly ionized oxygen narrowband filters were fed into the Hyperstar's filter holder one by one as I collected the image stacks. I also have an Orion star shoot, but the nebula was shot unguided. The exposure times were very short for the LRGB filters of only about one second. I used it like a finder though, with PhD guiding running on the laptop. One of the nice things about the ATIC Infinity software is I can stream the image acquisition live on the internet, as some do, or, as in this case, record a playback of the acquisition in the comfort of my own office space. It gives an idea of what I would have seen outside.
I processed the LRGB images using Maxim DL6. I followed only a very basic image processing protocol. I first stacked the images, then combined the images into a color image, and then applied a logarithmic stretch. I haven't yet done a calibration on these filters using a white star, so the color contribution of each stack to the final image is an estimate. Red was at 1, green at 1.56, and blue at 1.76. I'll properly calibrate them for this filter camera combination at some point. It can be seen that the major contributor to the image intensity of the Great Orion Nebula is in the red channel. The green and blue filter images are pretty grainy, indicating a lower signal to noise ratio. Luminance filters are great for final composition, but I found out that one still needs to focus after a filter change. And of course that led to a bit of softness in each of the channels. So don't believe the hype about them on that score. Good thing the detail information is contained mostly in the luminous channel. Next time I'll use a batten off mask for every filter change. At least the luminance filter keeps the focus reasonably close to that for the other filters. But the final image was very satisfying regardless of the focus issues. I continued on with the narrowband filters and upped the exposure to 6 or 8 seconds. I should probably pick one I suppose. The major contributor to the image was, unsurprisingly, the H-alpha emission, but the other emission lines seemed to contribute more to the fine structure. The contrast is greater in the dark areas of dust and in the nebula itself in the S2 image, a bit less so in the O3 image. I tried using the SHO palette in a 2 to 1 to 2 color processing, but the colors just weren't natural and so I switched back to the Hubble HSO 1 to 1 to 1 combination. The reddish hue shows a preponderance of H-alpha emission, but all three emissions contribute to the fine structure, making these areas grey. So not bad results for a first shot at CCD imaging.